بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to this new episode of women around the prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Today we will attempt to talk about two great women. One is the last of his wives and the other is the first of his daughters. So Maymuna bint al-Harith ibn Hazn, the mother of the believer and the wife of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, her mother is Hind bint Auf, and it was known among the Arabs that she, that is Hind bint Auf, was among the most honorable in-laws a woman could have. She had nine daughters from different husbands, which is by itself normal in Arabia. A woman can be widowed, divorced, and continue to marry and to live a life. Unlike what we think of women today, if a woman is divorced, then she's expired. If a woman is a widow, nobody looks at her, which is totally against Islamic values and against logic. Women can marry and marry and marry without any problem. This is the cycle of life. Hind bint Auf had nine daughters. Among those who married her daughters were two uncles of the Prophet Al-Abbas and Hamza. Hamza marrying Salma bint Umais. Al-Abbas marrying Lubaba al-Kubra, the grand Lubaba. Why were there a minor Lubaba? Yes, there was Lubaba Sora. There were two sisters. Lubaba al-Kubra was married to Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet She was also known by Umm al-Fadl. And Lubaba al-Sughra was married to Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, one of the fierce enemies of Islam who was killed and died as a kafir. But his son, was the sword of Allah Azza wa Jal, Khalid ibn al-Walid. So the Prophet was married to Khalid's aunt. And also two of the Prophet's cousins were married to her daughters. So Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and Ali ibn Abi Talib, they both married Asma bint Umais. Ja'far was martyred in the battle of Mu'tah, then afterwards, she got married to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And after Abu Bakr died, Ali ibn Abi Talib married her. And the Prophet والسلام, himself married two of Hind bint Auf's daughters. The first one we talked about was the mother of the believers, Zainab bint Khuzayma. May Allah be pleased with her. And then he married Maymuna bint Al-Harith. May Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, the believing sisters are Maymuna, the wife of the Prophet, her sister, Umm al-Fadl bint al-Harith, and her sister, Salma bint al-Harith, the wife of Hamza, and Asma bint Umais, their sister from their mother's side. So if I made a mistake earlier saying that Salma bint Umais, well, this hadith indicates that she was Salma bint Al-Harith, despite some of the books of history that calls her Salma bint Umais as well. Now, when the Prophet married Maymuna alayhi salatu wasalam, he married her about three years and a half before his death. And he married her because of the advice of his uncle, Al-Abbas, who told him to marry his wife's younger sister, 
she was married first, then she married another man, and he died when she became a widow. Al-Abbas advised the Prophet ﷺ to marry her, and the Prophet took this advice and married Maymuna. Her name was Barra, and again he changed her name into Maymuna because Barra is self-praising uh, um, by saying, my name is righteous, pious person. So he changed it into Maymuna, which means blessed. And by marrying her, her tribe came into Islam in groups. Because now the Prophet is married والسلام, to one of their people. And they came, Bani Hilal came into Islam and supported Islam greatly. Maymuna, may Allah be pleased with her, was married to the Prophet والسلام, in Saraf. And she died some 40 plus years later in the same spot she married the Prophet ﷺ and was buried there and she was 80 years of age. That was in the 51st year of Hijrah. So after 40 years of the death of the Prophet ﷺ, lived with the Prophet only for three years and a half, yet gained the honor of this life and in the hereafter by being the mother of the believers that no one would ever mention her name without saying, may Allah Azza wa be pleased with her. And she's also the wife of our Prophet والسلام, in Jannah. Radiallahu anha wa ardaha. And now we move to the first daughter of the Prophet والسلام, A woman known for her wisdom, known for her excellent lineage. No one can surpass her when it comes to honor and lineage. She's the daughter of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet and messenger of Allah azza wa jal. Her mother is Khadija bint Khuwailid, the one we know a lot about. She was the eldest of the prophet's four daughters. May Allah be pleased with them all. And she was the first one among them to get married. She was born 10 years before the revelation came to the Prophet ﷺ, which means that she was about 10 years old when the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet and a messenger. Now, having said that, when she was at the age of 10, all the dignitaries of Quraysh set eyes on her to be a potential wife to one of them and the luckiest who would win it, who would win her heart. At the age of 10, it was her cousin, Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi'i. He's the son of Hala bint Khuwailid, the sister of Khadija, mother of the believers. May Allah be pleased with them. And he won her heart, proposed, and the Prophet gave his daughter Zainab to him in marriage. She was 10 years of age. And she gave her husband Ali and Umama. Now, everybody knows only the grandsons of the Prophet ﷺ to be Al-Hassan and Hussein, the sons of Ali and Fatima, not knowing that there were others. So Ali and Umama were the children of Zainab and Abil As. Ali died when he was young in the hadith where the Prophet carried his grandson as he was dying and start, started to weep. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions told him, how is this possible? You are weeping. And the Prophet said to them that this is mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is Ali, the one who died in the hands of the Prophet Alaihi As for Umama, 
she grew and later on was married to Ali ibn Abi Talib on the advice and instruction of his late wife Fatima, who was her aunt, but she told him, if I die, marry Umama. Now, Zainab was among the first to accept Islam with her mother and other sisters. And when the Prophet migrated to Medina, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she stayed with her husband, Abu al-As. And Abu al-As was a very decent man. Though he was not a Muslim at the time, the way Zainab treated him, he fell in love from head to toe. And he could not think of leaving her. Because what was the school Zainab were taught in? Zainab were taught in the school of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and Khadija bint Khuwaylid. What do you expect their offspring to be? So she was loyal to him, faithful, kind, loving, caring. When she accepted Islam and Abu al-As remained on the religion of Quraysh, the people of Quraysh came to him and said to him that you are among the most trusted men to us. We deposit our wealth and money and we entrust you with our trade. So we are the dignitaries of Mecca and we are requesting that you divorce Muhammad's daughter and choose any woman from Quraysh and we will give her to you. An offer people may usually not be able to refuse, but not Abu al-As. He said, no, by Allah, where would I find a wife like Zainab? I would never do such a thing and I would never depart or leave or separate my beloved wife. So they left him. On the second year of Hijrah, the Battle of Badr took place. And Abu al-As was with the army of the disbelievers, but he did not fight. He just accompanied his people without fighting, without participation. And this is why he was taken as a prisoner of war. When the Prophet Asim asked for ransom, we know the story where Zainab sent her brother-in-law with money and with the necklace that mother Khadija gave it to her on her wedding night to Abu al-As. The Prophet saw this, felt soft, and he asked the people if they were to let her prisoner go and return his ransom, then this is kind of them, and they immediately complied and they sent him away, back to Mecca. The Prophet then asked him والسلام, to send his wife, that is his daughter, the Prophet's daughter Zainab, to Medina. And Abu al-As agreed. When he went to Medina, he told his beloved wife, filled with sorrow, that your father wants you beside him. So he sent her with his brother, Kinana ibn al-Rabi'ah. Now, when Kinana took Zainab to take her to Medina, two of the people of Quraysh, Habbar ibn al-Aswad and Nafi' ibn Abd Amr. These two people at the time were so evil that they started attacking the camel that was carrying Zainab with their spears. And you know what happens to a big animal when being poked with a spear, it started jumping and moving violently. Zainab was pregnant at the time. Such violent moves made her miscarriage and she bled. And she was taken back to Quraysh, left with the family of 
Banu Umayya, to be specific with Hind bint Utbah, the wife of Abu Sufyan. And the Prophet ﷺ heard of this. He sent one of his companions to extract her and bring her to Medina, which he did. The Prophet ﷺ was so angry with these two men, Habbar ibn Aswad and Nafi' ibn Abd al-Amr, to the extent that when it was the conquest of Mecca, before that, he used to send expeditions and tell them, if you meet these two men, burn them alive for what they had done to my daughter Zainab. And then the revelation comes from Allah Azza wa Jal, correcting the Prophet and telling him that it is not permissible to burn a living creature and torturing it with fire because this is only to Allah. So the Prophet corrected his command and said, do not burn them, rather kill them. And then Habbar, later on, accepted Islam and came to the Prophet ﷺ in migration and showing his repentance. What would you do if someone attacks your daughter, causes her to miscarriage? The man, I wouldn't say with the golden heart, because even this would not suffice to describe his heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The moment the man accepted Islam, the Prophet forgave him, as if nothing had, had, had been done. And it shows you that the heart of the Prophet ﷺ was filled with forgiveness, with love, with compassion, forgiving such a person after what he had done. Now, in the second year of Hijrah, in Badr, uh, Battle of Badr, Abu al-As was captured for the first time. Four years later, on the sixth year of Hijrah, he was captured again. This time, he was in a caravan going to trade with Syria. When he and his wealth, they were abducted by the soldiers of Allah. When he came to Medina, he managed to seek refuge in his ex-wife because they were separated for four years due to difference of religion. And she heard that, Zainab, and after Fajr prayer, she announced in the masjid, my name is Zainab, the daughter of Muhammad, and I give refuge to Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi'i. So the Prophet ﷺ was shocked. And he said to the people, by Allah, this is the first time I know of this. I have no knowledge of it at all. So if you see it fit to send him with what he came with, that's up to you. As for seeking refuge, the minimum of the Muslims can give protection and refuge to anyone. So it was a first where a woman comes and gives protection to a non-Muslim and the Muslims all abide by this pledge of protection given by a woman. So the Prophet ﷺ gave him his trade and, and money, nothing was missing, and he dispatched him to Mecca. Once he reached Mecca, he gave everybody their money and their wealth and their trade, and he took all that was deposited with him and gave it back to the people. And then he said to them, have I missed anyone? And they said, no, may Allah reward you. You have given us everything that we have entrusted you with. Then he said, if this is the case, then I bear witness that there is no God worthy of being worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger and servant. I did not want to embrace Islam before this time, so that you wouldn't say that I kept something for myself, or I did not return the money to you. As of now, I, I am a Muslim, and he went back to Medina, migrating to the Prophet when the Prophet saw him, وسلم, he was happy and he gave him his wife back without a new contract, without a new dowry. And this is a ruling in fiqh 
which is when two couple, when a couple who were non-Muslims, one of them, usually the wife, accepts Islam and she is obliged to leave her husband. She cannot live with a kafir, with a non-Muslim. But if she left him for a year, for a five, for 10 years without getting married, and after that he became a Muslim and they wanted to go back again in marriage, they can without any marriage contract, according to this story. The Prophet والسلام, honored Zainab a lot. She was his eldest daughter. He had so much love for her. He gave her to her husband when she was 10 years of age. She believed in him alongside with her sisters and mother. They were the first to accept Islam. And then when she was attacked by Habbar and his accomplice, and she miscarried, she kept on suffering from that and she got sick more frequent because of that until she died on the eighth year of Hijrah. You can imagine the feelings of the Prophet ﷺ after so many losses in his life, so many tragedies from the death of his father while his mother was pregnant with him, from the death of his mother when he was six years of age, from the death of his grandfather who took care of him when he was eight, from the death of his wife Khadija and the death of his uncle Abu Talib and being forced to leave the most beloved country to his heart and migrate to Medina from the treacherous treatment and the betrayals of the Jews continuously and the undermining of the hypocrites for the attempts of spreading Islam and for da'wah and for his personal and own tragedies and calamities. Yet he remained standing on his feet. He trusted Allah Azza wa Jal. He believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. He sought his strength only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why he remained steadfast till the day he died. That was Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah Azza wa Jal be pleased with her. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.